You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. A theme of the summer was clubs' inability to sell unwanted players or to raise funds by cashing in on assets that they'd otherwise like to have kept. So how does selling players actually work? And what happens when it goes wrong? Well, the process begins with a conversation, sometimes between a coach and a player, but often between an agent and a CEO or sporting director. Hundreds of clubs across Europe now pay for software packages, including Transfer Room, an online network that allows them to advertise their own recruitment requirements and list the players they are willing to let go. It's a way of expediting the process, cutting out rogue intermediaries, and it's one of the tools to have taken the place of the old transfer list, which used to be faxed around the clubs in the pre-internet days. Now, The reason for wanting rid of a player are numerous. Some teams need the money or to trim the wage bill. Perhaps a player was suited to a former manager, but not his successor. Well, maybe they're judged to be a bad influence and needs to go for the betterment of the squad. But regardless of the reason, sometimes it can go very badly. Especially if the player doesn't want to be sold or feels he's being pushed out of a lucrative financial situation. Now, there is one well-salaried player currently surplus to requirements at his championship club who is refusing to leave. In response, his club are doing what many in these circumstances do, consigning him to training with the academy players and separating him completely from the first team squad. It's a common tactic. Players who clubs want to sell will be deprived of access to senior squad training sessions, physios and analytical staff. They instruct them to work with the coaches and sports scientists who manage the academy age groups or tell them to train alone, at times when the training ground is quiet or even empty. These are deliberate ploys designed to make the player ask themselves how badly they want to stay at the club, and the treatment can go further again. Exclusions from the first team canteen, car park and official media streams are not uncommon. Some are even made to wear academy kit. One Premier League midfielder was recently removed from his club's senior squad WhatsApp group after being told he was not in the plans for this new season. Clubs have a responsibility to provide a certain standard of training support and, to a degree, a little exposure can help generate transfer bids, but isolation is a way of chipping away at resistance. And even those who fight hard to stick around can be talked around in the end, whether by money or by the reality of the brick wall in front of them. One agent told The Athletic about a transfer that took place from the Premier League to the Championship a few years ago. The player in question resisted and resisted, but every time he said no, the eventual buying club increased the proposed contract terms significantly. Conversely, they were doing the selling club's job for them. A transfer the player was determined to reject it became too lucrative for him to turn down and it went through, just as the summer deadline began to loom. The agent representing him assumed at the outset that the deal had zero chance whatsoever, but the numbers kept going up and up. But there are good ways of handling a sale with Norwich City and Emi Buendia proving a case in point. Aware of Buendia's ambitions, Norwich Sporting Director Stuart Webber sat down with the player and his agent early last season to map out an eventual exit. By investigating the process, Norwich believed they were taking control of the situation and avoiding bad blood. Pricing parameters were discussed, and impressed by Norwich's cooperation, Buendia was fully on board for the rest of last season, helping the club back to the Premier League. That promotion put Norwich in a strong financial position and the Argentinian's agent was told that the fee that took his client away from Caro Road needed to start with a three. Aston Villa were the first to place a serious bid. Rival interest from Arsenal then lifted Norwich's hope of getting close to their ideal price of £40 million. An Arsenal bid of £30 million plus £5 million in potential add-ons exceeded Villa's by £2 million of add-ons. Weber then informed Villa chief executive Christian Perslow of the counteroffer from North London and outlined the bid that would seal Buendia's services without this becoming an auction. Perslow rang back and improved Villa's proposal to £33 million plus £5 million in add-ons and the deal was further sweetened with a 10% sell-on clause. Buendia is only 24. By the time Richard Garlick, Arsenal's director of football operations, tried to intervene again, the player was already in Birmingham for his Villa medical. The whole process took a fortnight. Buendia was sold promptly after the end of last season, the deal done in June, preventing many of the issues which can result at the end of a window. So you see, it's complicated. 
At the top of the market, when everyone is motivated, a sale can be as simple as naming a price and having it met. More often, though, it needs finesse, and at times, patience and creativity. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.